How's it going, Dazzlers? Welcome back to Daz Games and the Town of Light. And when we left off, we uncovered more of the story. We discovered that we had a love with a patient that was forbidden. And now we are going to give a letter to Mum. Mum, um, oh, oh, I don't know, is, is even here. The letters were sent to the archive. It was their job to send them. Okay, so where's the archive? Do we know where that is? I need a map. I don't know where the maps are. Probably downstairs, isn't it? So we've got to find the archive, and once we find the archive, we can post this letter, which I, I don't think is going anywhere real soon. What's this? Ooh. Oh, wow. Okay. That was a little bit unnerving, wasn't it? Um, I don't know where... Okay. It's such an eerie feeling this game gives you. It's, it's unlike anything I've played. It scares you without actually scaring you, if that makes any sense. Okay. I don't know what this place is. Oh, it's lagging a bit. I don't know what's going on here. Uh, let's... Oh, right. Here's a map. Thank God. Alright. Archives. Well, there's nothing uh, on this floor that says archives. Oh, hold on. Patients, storeroom, and archives. Okay. Ah. So it's right down the bottom there. Let's go right down the bottom and post this letter. See what happens afterwards. Because if you don't remember in the last episode, guys, you can go back and watch it if you like. But, um, she got a letter from Mum explaining... When you were sent Ooh. to a lunatic asylum, you lost the right to possess anything. Everything you arrived with was packed up and stored here, even the clothes oh. you were wearing. In case you were released one day, too many, however, never left. Oh, keys, okay. Envelopes, okay. So where should we put them? There must be a file with my name in the filing cabinet, somewhere here. All right, let's have a look then. This this looks like the filing cabinet, doesn't it? Okay, can I look at the names? A, B. I've forgotten my name. What's my name? Dear Mother. Ah, oh, here we go. Please, I beg you, get me out of this place. It frightens me so much. You were right. I know I was wrong. I realize I'm so ashamed. If you only knew how much. But now I'll behave well. Sure, now things will be fine. I'll work hard. I'll be very good. Your daughter, Renee. Okay. This letter. It was Renee's letter. Just like when it was written. But it was never sent. Why? Why did a thing like that happen? I've received your letter, Mum. You tell me to be patient and strong while I only have fear and pain. And you no longer write to me. If only these lines could be my soul and tell you what's happening to me. The kids want to kill me. They all look the other way and they tell me what I must do. I don't understand. She helps me, but what have they done to her? Can you tell me? Will you help me? Renee. So none of these letters were fulfilled. Montefascoli, 7th July, 1940. My dear daughter, I have received no news from you. You haven't even dropped me a line for months. Unfortunately, I can't afford to come and visit you. I've no money for the fare. Do you remember Mr. Onofrio? He'll soon be coming to Volterra on business. I've asked him if would be kind enough to ask the director to have news about you. I hope when he comes back, he'll be able to give me good news. But write to me. I know that I was strict with you. You have to excuse me. I didn't realize. I've given Mr. Onofrio a new doll for you. You told me that you lost yours, and I know you loved it so much. It's not as nice as your Charlotte, but I hope that it will comfort you nonetheless. Keep your chin up, daughter. Things will be fine. You'll see. Mom. Uh -huh. But she didn't get any of these. 
not delivered. Montefascoli, 12 October, 1940. Dear daughter, I have written two letters to you and have received no reply. I await a letter anxiously every day. Mr. Onofrio has come back. He brought you the doll. Do you like it? He told me he didn't manage to speak to the director, but he did see you. I pray for you every day. Don Gino said a prayer for you during Sunday Mass. That was lovely, wasn't it? I've made up my mind, Renee. I'm going to bring you home. Shit. I've already written to the director. I told him that I'll take care of you. At the moment, I'm not well and can't work, but I'll soon get better. You'll see as soon as I'm up to making the journey, I'll come and get you. I know you're suffering a lot, but bear up. I beg you. Crap, she was coming Mom to get her. Mom will come and pick up Renee, won't she? Mom is good, but she's not well. That's why that man came. The doll. Renee could have played with it, waiting for her to arrive. But Renee never had it with her. Is it one of Mum's lies? She knew that she had hurt Renee and... No, no, Mummy's good. That man brought it. We've just remembered him, haven't we? It was Renee who was wrong. The doll's there, that's sure. Perhaps she's been kidnapped like everyone else, locked up somewhere in here. Okay, where are we going now then? Let's look for the second doll. It'll be among bundles of the patient's things. Uh, would it be in here then? Because these are like patient's things, right? Ah. Ah, can I climb up here? There we go. Okay, now I can reach it. Is this it? It's got Renee written on it. Now we can open the bundle on that table in front of the window. <gasps> okay, we will put it on the table in front of the window. Oh, there's, is that it? A See, doll. Mom was good. I was bad. Mom was worried about Renee and Charlotte. I abandoned Charlotte. We've abandoned her. Oh, God. Shoes. A necklace. We're on chapter 10 now. What's this? Ah. Oh. oh, wow. Is that her? May the Lord guide your path and keep you away from sin, Mum. God ain't gonna help here. Wow. Okay. Well, I think that's all I can look at. Uh, do we go out now? Are we done? Let's look for Charlotte. We have abandoned her. She will always remain where we abandoned her. Beneath the hot lights. Ah, okay. So we're going to get the other doll now that we um, put in that wheelchair at the beginning of the game. I think she's downstairs. God, this is so eerie. Ah, okay. She's in here. There she is. Hey, dolly. Oh. I think we triggered another flashback. Question is, how bad is it going to be? <laughs> They've been quite bad so far. But it's, it's great, like, uncovering the past of, like, a building. I don't think I've seen it in a game before that does it this well, at least, anyway. I mean, we've played lots of horror games where you look at notes and stuff, but... I know, it's just not the same. Oh. Okay, here we go. Oh, are we in a... Oh, we're in a wheelchair. There's my knees. Okay. Okay, where are we going? We're going all the way down there. What's happening? Very good I didn't voice do anything. I only obeyed orders. Charlotte's gone away. I didn't come to get us down away. I only obeyed orders. Leave us alone. Charlotte's gone away. I only obeyed orders. I only obeyed orders. Mom will come and get us down. I didn't do anything. I only obeyed orders. Even though we're bad. Mom won't leave us alone. I didn't do anything. Charlotte gone away. I only obeyed orders. Mom will come and get us now. She loves us, even though we're bad. I didn't do anything. 
I only obeyed orders. It's like terrible the sorts of conditions that mental health patients used to have to go through. What's happening, ladies? Man, screw this game on Oculus Rift, seriously. doing? What's happening? What's she doing? They do electric shock therapy, which doesn't work. Yeah, like he's got the button. Oh, this is terrible. Yeah, see, they put that either side of your head, and then they press the button, and like an electric electricity shoots through your brain. It's, it's terrible. I think we've come a long way in medicine, don't you? <laughs> Chapter 11. Yeah, and this is, uh, where it is, and that's the piece of equipment. They used to do it, which we found earlier in the game. Oh man, that ringing needs to stop. Seventh September, nineteen thirty-eight. The patient frequently indulges in recriminations expressed in an explosive tone of voice. This morning, she threw away the milk, saying it was full of urine, spittle, and all the other filth. Praised, she hears voices. They order her about. She says she heard children singing. They were imprisoned in a school. 20th January, 1939. Mutistic, groggy, pays no attention to anything. When questioned and stimulated, she starts crying and weeping. At other times, she laughs. 1st June. Apathetic, eats very little. She refuses to be touched. Doesn't respond. Passes her time in the park. The cooks report that she sits on a bench in front of the kitchens. 14 October. Impulsive once again. This morning she asked for two eggs to make zabaglioni, but the moment she was given them, she threw them away. Excited, uproarious, slightly confused, she strips off. 8th December. Tied to bed for 15 days. High-spirited, tends to make witty comments and use vulgar words, laughs hysterically, masturbates. The nurses report that about two weeks ago she remained in the showers on her own and didn't want to leave. They report that when they took her away she swore at them and then hit out at them and bit them. Two nurses had to be treated for their injuries. Since then they've kept her tied to the bed. Transferred to the semi-agitated ward. From the care of Dr. B to the care of Dr. C. I was with Amara in the showers. My memories terrify me. They're not real, are they? Yeah, they just a fragment of my, my imagination. Where to refer into memories? What you are? Fifteenth December, Doctor C. Patient notes. 
The abnormality of her psychic state has induced her to lead a life which is irregular and tends towards delinquency. A fickle and flighty character, she abandons her household duties at intervals and dabbles in occasional prostitution. Prostitution? Nobody would have ever believed a lunatic, let alone a lunatic who lives in the worst sort of sin. Could such a person ever have been raped? Certainly not. Her mental deficiency makes her deaf to the reprimands of her family. She has shown suicidal tendencies. She was brought to the ward yesterday, agitated and vociferous, treated with cardizol, two injections a week for five weeks. The therapies remove the light for a short while, but also all will, desire, and hope. The important thing was to keep us quiet. To a certainness that they were trying to make you feel better, you were lost souls. The therapy was terrible and painful, but the treatments, the only ones that existed. That's kind of true. 2nd June. I'll go with the first After one. a long period of calm and improvement, the patient is very agitated today and vehemently refuses to submit to a gynecological examination. She swore and cursed those who generated her, flailing her arms and hitting out. The patient, according to reports by Dr. B, has been subjected to periodic checkups since she had a spontaneous abortion about two years ago in her third month of pregnancy. Conception occurred after she had sexual intercourse with a stranger who sneaked into the hospital park. As detailed in the charges filed at police headquarters in Volterra, a copy of which is attached to these clinical notes, ES therapy. That's how the reality is hidden. It's all carefully planned. Perhaps it doesn't refer to Renee, at least not that Renee. It's well planned, the institution had to protect itself. Why hide? I don't think you're... I don't think we were afraid of you. You were worthless for... I don't know, I don't really know what the right answers are. 15th June. <laughs> the nurses report that after having received her mother's letter, she fell into a state of great mental confusion. She threw her soup over another inmate because she was very anxious, and she punched a nurse. Impulsive lashes about her. She rails against the doctor in vulgar terms while he is examining her. Lashes out and spits. Block all correspondence so as not to give the patient further reasons to become agitated. 20th August, tied to bed. The nurses report that the patient becomes highly agitated after the visit of a relative or family friend. Even two days later, she still shouts ceaselessly that he commands her that she must obey and harm herself and that she is not Charlotte. All visits forbidden, constrained to bed and intensification of <clears throat> ES therapy until we achieve results. No contact with the exterior. In that way, no one knew what was happening within these walls. Yeah, she was thrown in here and locked away to make the world forget it. The people who were in here were no longer human beings as far as society was concerned. The important thing was to keep you quiet. I don't know. Calm down. You've got to be calm. Don't get agitated. We'll make you calm down. That's the only thing that matters. Is tranquility worth the price of not living? Hundreds of us alone squeezed into the most inadequate spaces. Stayed calm was essential for our well-being. Alternative was there in any case. It was not a life worth living. Certainly not, but in that manner, from exterior, everything seemed... More acceptable. I don't really know what to click! 3rd March. <laughs> Alert, correct attitude, replies when questioned. The nurses report that the patient is calm. She washes and looks after herself. She affirms the existence of a certain Amara. She says that Amara is a patient who disappeared when she was moved to this ward. No confirmation. Probably a regressive hallucination. Evaluate transfer. Amara invented by me? That's not possible. She was there. I know she was there. I feel it. She oh. must have left traces somewhere. Oh shit, okay. So we have to find we out if she was real. We can look for her things in the storeroom containing the bundles of patients' belongings on the first floor. Alright, I guess we're going there then. It's just the, these games when they talk about mental illness like... They play with your own head, like, you don't know if the story, if you to agree with them, or if it's made-believe in their head, like, it's very hard to determine what is real. Where are we going? 
Storming the Teddy Bears on the first floor. I think, it, yeah, it is, it's up here, isn't it? This is the first floor. I think it's right down this way. So uh, we'll go down to the end here and find out. So, was the, uh, is she saying that the woman that she was having a relationship with in here, did she not exist? Or did she make her up? Is that what they're saying? These are Amara's things. I'm okay, sorry. there we go. Let's uh, put them on the table and have a look. Whoa. 12th March, 1938. Today, Renee, the young girl, arrived. She's terrorized, poor thing. See? She remembers when we met the first time. I met her mother, poor thing. She gave vent to her fears with me. I promised her that I would keep an eye on her daughter. The lady told me her daughter's doll had been taken away from her, and she was very worried about this because, when Renee's depressed, as she is in this period, she barricades herself inside and can't communicate. She uses the doll for this, and it becomes her voice, her eyes, and her ears. Dr. B said that I'll soon get out of here. I'm sorry, I'm sad about leaving Renee. I'll no longer be able to protect her. My poor friend! She was hoping to be able to get out of here, but nobody ever leaves this place. That poor girl is really ill. I'm the only one she ever speaks to. I told her I was leaving, and she stared at me, saying that I would never leave. She almost frightened me. Then she started to cry. I felt like crying too. She didn't say anything else. I'm worried because that terrible man had set his eyes on her. I'm certain it was him who brought her in here. Of all the good people that there are, why did it have to be him? She knew. I told her everything. She knew about that man. But I had advised a nurse friend of mine to keep an eye on her, and I'm sure she'll do it because she's a good woman. Her friend, the nurse. I think I remember something. She worked in this ward. Okay. Amara, there she is. She existed, certainly she existed. There she is, my friend. Amara, okay. So, we found Amara. Here we are together. How could I have imagined, even for a single moment, that she never existed? But does she, though? Like, oh my god, I hope she does. Okay, so now, now what are we doing? What are we looking now? Let's search for the nurse's traces in the nursery room on the first floor. Alright, nursery room. Let's have a look for the nursery room, shall we? The game is quite laggy. Alright, nurse's room too. This is the nurse's room, not the nursery room. What's this? Okay. Oh, it is in a war. Okay. Alright. All these people and... What's that? It's a music box, isn't it? She mainly worked in the Margliano Pavilion. Let's get out of here and look for that pavilion. Okay. She was there and nothing frightened me anymore. Ah. Okay, that, that's where we gotta go. Yeah, it's this way. Okay, so we've left the hospital uh, because it's situated in a, a pavilion nearby and a pavilion is like um, a structure um, separate from the main building. That's that's its most common meaning, I think. But it's a lovely day to be walking in the park, right? This is the way. Okay, yeah, this is the way. Going the right way. I sometimes feel that maybe uh, Renee here could walk a little bit faster. <laughs> She's very slow. All right. Which way do we go? We'll try this way first. But this site is very old and... Okay, I don't think we can go this way. No. Looks like we're going up this way. I apologize for the lagging as well. I'm not sure why this section of the game is lagging so much. It keeps sort of stuttering and freezing. Not sure what's happening, but um... It's been a good game so far. I hope it doesn't crash or anything like that. Now see, there's the main building, and here is an entirely new structure. Interesting. I wonder which way we go round. No car. Ooh. 
Oh, which building is it? Ah, this is it. Montialango. Alright, we're going in. What is this place? She's kind with everyone. Even with me. When I saw her, I felt a little bit better. The sick children laughed and played with her. Not even they could frighten me. Don't bother Renee. She's a princess here, didn't you know? She told stories. She said there was a war out there. However, they looked at me and frightened me. They would come to look for me in the evening, and then no one would have protected me. Not even you, Charlotte. Right? That's not creepy at all. Oh! Who's that? Who the hell was that in the car? Who drove off? Let's follow the hearse until we reach the graveyard. Oh crap. Well, the hearse went down this way. Was it an imaginary hearse? Was anyone actually driving it? That's the thing. I don't know where it went. It could only have gone down this road, right? There it is. Look, it's down there. I see it. I'm just following the hearse. Maybe this is a memory that she's reliving. It's so hard to tell. I thought we were going to go in like other buildings as well. I was quite excited. This game keeps you on your toes. It just, you don't know what to expect. Why are we going to the graveyard though? Like. <laughs> I'm thinking about it and I'm like, do it. What, what, what are we going to do at the graveyard? I, I don't want to go to a graveyard. Why, why are we going there? Good for enough already, haven't we? How do we get through the gates? It is a ghost car, isn't it? That's what I, that's what I reckon. It's a ghost car. Excuse me, Mr. Hearse. What are you doing? Turn down here. I don't know how it got through all this. Where's the graveyard then? So I've got to here. I don't know. This way? Okay, I think I've got to go this way because I can't go that way the hearse went. Yeah, it's got to be this way. Oh man, what is wrong with the lag? Come on. Kind of like a hidden path, right? It kind of goes down the same way as the hearse, though. So I'm just gonna keep following this path. I feel like we're coming towards the end of the game now. I really don't want that to happen. I've enjoyed it so much. Okay, caution. Uh, anyone read that? Anyone know what that means? Because I don't. I ain't got a clue. this. I think the graveyard's down there. I'm just going to keep following the path though. I don't want to come off the path in case I get lost. And uh, We walk so slowly that I don't want to go the wrong way because it means I have to walk this, this slow finding my way back. Well, it is lovely out here, isn't it? You can't, you can't deny that. I shall build a house here. We shall record Renee Manor. We got the 
That's such a good name for a house. Okay, ooh, okay. Right, this is the graveyard, and there's the hearse. It's got here before I did. Okay, oh shit. What now? Oh no, that, no, no, don't, don't do that. Ah, uh, there. Oh, okay, yeah. My god. I did it. It was me. What? What'd you do? Kilda? Why? Yeah, I love the I, I love this fucking track. Primary school. All right. What? I take it this is when we were a kid, right? Hello. Oh man, this is trippy as shit. <laughs> Can't stare at it for too long because otherwise, like, everyone goes all bendy. This is a primary school, and oh no, no, it's turning into something else. Did something bad happened here. Oh, now it's prison. Ah, oh, shit. It's a derelict prison. Now it's a house. The terrible wallpaper, I might add. Oh shit. Okay, that's that's, uh, that's pretty. What? Okay. I don't know where to go. I'm gonna follow the way with the drawings. I'm gonna say that's a sign. But all right, maybe not. Shit. Oh God, this makes me so uneasy. Where do we go? I'm just going to take the, the way where the drawings are. I'm going to take it that's... Okay. Man, that song is in my head. It's catchy as shit. Oh shit, why is it getting dark? Why is it getting dark? Um... I don't know what I'm doing.
I hear birds. I hear birds and shit. What's happened? I ain't got a clue. What kind of place is this? Maybe I'm dead. I can't see any light. I might be dead. Isn't this the I beginning? I can't get up. What's going on here? What's happening to me? There's no one here. Yet, these noises... God, my head is killing me. This was the beginning. I can't keep my eyes open. Oh, shit. Oh, hey. You guys aren't intimidating at all. Oh, man. somewhere now. Are we still in the same place? <laughs> There's nothing really to narrate, is there? It's just, uh, I'm being wheeled on a fucking trolley, and I don't know where I'm going. Oh, shit. What, what's happening? I want to get off this damn trolley right now. I want out. Oh, God. I'm so tired today, I'm so sleepy. You'd think this would wake me up and keep me on edge, but no. <laughs> no. Man, I really I really have had enough of this trolley ride. You know, I just wanna I just wanna leave. Can we get up, please? Can someone bring me some ice cream? Oh. I guess there really is nothing to do but just sit here and wait. How are you guys anyway? You good? I'm good. I'm not too bad. Had enough of this fucking trolley. This will be wheeled somewhere. Chapter 14. Wow! That was a trip. And not in my favourite rocket ship. Oh, I'm in a cell. Let's, uh, shall we read this? My medical file again. I don't want to know. I don't want to know anymore. Yeah. There's only confusion. There were some who had scarcely seen me and thought they knew me and understood what was happening to me and could decide about my life. Oh, the door's open. Oh, wow, okay. We're in a totally different part now. Hello? Anybody home? I guess not. Oof. Under construction, I guess. <laughs> I really want that track on iTunes right now. It's catchy as fuck. I want to know the lyrics. Ooh. Where are we going now? Uh, this place is fallen down, love. Be careful of falling objects and shit. Okay, alright, well, um... Can I go through here? No? Alright. So much detail in this game, like... 
they've done they put so much character into this old building it almost feels like it's out there and it could exist very clever I hope it doesn't exist though Jesus well, that's the real f thing like you know th they said that this is based on actual things that happens to patients and the types of things they went through which is is awful okay anything in here no just a room okay so if you take a wrong turn you could go all the way back like really slowly can I go down here or no it's so beautiful oh my god oh dear all right can I go through here I like the way that there's just like no sort of like clear way to go it's kind of like a lot of exploration in this game oh what's this can I play something on here? I was just repeating yourself there, right? Let's get out of here. I've had about enough of this asylum. It's all falling down and shit. What's this room? This looks nice. No, it doesn't. I was wrong. Still got acros up. Alright, let's have a look at this desk. This looks cool. This place would be so looted, though. Telegram. What does that say? 28th August, 1942. We hereby communicate the death of Ada T. Mother of Renee T. What? A patient in your institution. No known relative. Sincerely yours, Onofrio P. She died. I've nobody left in the world. Hello. Nobody at all. Solitude is very strange. It muffles everything. Slows it down. It's an endless scream which doesn't emit any sound. A silent shout. I can't stop Shh. looking at myself. I will never leave this place. There's nobody for me out there. These walls have become my skin, and the wretched desperation within them is my soul without a voice. Here, nobody weeps anymore. How I would love to feel life, desperation, anger. I've stopped dreaming daydreaming, maybe even thinking. I've lived in a reality which has corroded me, depriving me of everything, even of my capacity to feel pain. So we're staying here forever? That kind of sucks. Not gonna lie. I mean, we could just go home and have some herbal tea. Right? That sounds good. Tea's good. Alright. Down. Oh, why are we moving faster now? The whole game you've walked like one mile an hour. Oh, okay. Uh, bye, uh, crazy place. I'm out. <laughs> Fuck this place, I'm out! Oh, that's one of the new uh, buildings that we found. Okay, so we did actually get to explore it. Fabulous. Where are we going now? Are we going this way? Or is it going to make us go into the other building? What's gonna happen now? I don't understand. Alright, so now we've got a fucking way back. I take it we're going this way. Wheelchair. How are you? You good? Alright, there's a brick wall there and there. I'm not going all that way. We're gonna go this way. This way this way looks like a door that opens. There it is. May 1943. Renee's in a good state of health. She eats and speaks. Is orientated in space and time. Therapy suspended. 3rd December. She asks, reasonably, if she can leave the hospital. Evaluate patient for six months. 2nd May, 1944. Discharge denied, despite favorable psychiatric opinion. The patient has no home or means of support. 4th May. The reasons why discharge is impossible are explained. And in this manner, Renee learns of her mother's death, two years after the fact. 5th May. Shit. During the night, she tried to kill herself by hanging herself with a sheet. Saved by the nurses. Restrained to her bed, she once more tries to kill herself by suffocation. It is decided to perform a transorbital lobotomy. So this is the part of the game where you learn what really happened, huh? Oh shit. Yeah, don't, don't make me relive the lobotomy. If that's cool. Hello. It's very bright in here. You might want to get a blind for that window. 
Man, we are moving so fast. Okay, any of these rooms? Anything? 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 No, I'll be going in here. Sink. Great. I like sinks. Well, oh, what? Oh, okay, we actually have to click on that. <laughs> What now? The Lucifer Laboratory spreads rapidly Italy to other European countries in America. The original technique proceeded by, uh, who convinced the first form of trilobotomy later improvised by Dr. W.J. Freeman. Okay. The operation involved gaining access to the frontal lobes of the brain by soaring through the bone of the orbit above the eyelids and the lobes by means of oh my god it goes up through the eye into the brain contrary to what was often thought the patients did not always receive validating damage although this was often the case well you da Wanders was awarded the Nobel Prize for his medicine in 1949 oh shit oh that's terrible we've come so far with medicines and like, antidepressants and stuff like that, like, all this was kind of all necessary to get to where we are today. Oh, shit. Yeah, can we, can we not, can we not relive it? Is that cool? Is that cool? Yeah. Don't, don't really want to go there. I kind of want to go home. Oh, hey, nurse! You look beautiful today. Say, could you not stick stuff in my eyes? I don't like stuff in my eyes. See, like, I close them and you won't get access to them. I swear to Christ. And I can really, you know, clench my eyelids closed quite tight. That's a fabulous pen. Hey, hey, come on. Don't do that. What are you writing, anyway? I bet you're not even writing. I bet you're just doodling or doing a crossword puzzle. Oh, shit. Oh, there we are. Hey! You know, it's rude to stare. Oh, it's rude to just do that! Like, get close to that. That's uncomfortably close. Oh, shit. Oh, wow, wow. You need a tic-tac. I'll do that to you when you're trying to sleep. See how you feel. Oh, God, what's gonna happen? Okay. Ah, no. No, you don't. You don't have to die. You don't have to do that. <laughs> Fucking shit. Oh. No, no, you, you, you just, no, no, put the hat. It's fucking in there. Jesus! <laughs> that did a lot of fucking good, did it? Oh man, that was um, that was something else right there. Tenth of June, nineteen forty-four. Operation successful. Patient tranquil and collaborative. Motor <coughs> coordination capacity reduced, but she's improving. Transfer to the tranquil department in the care of Doctor B. Twenty-fifth of October. Continues to talk about Amara and her doll, Charlotte. The disturbances of motor capacity show slight signs of improvement. Difficulty walking, not capable of riding, and the nurses report that they have to help her dress, wash, and feed herself. In the summer of 1944, 
Renee was transferred back into my department. Aware of little, indifferent, I hardly ever spoke. One day, she said, when I find the courage to look at myself in the mirror, I see a young face which is aged and looks at me full of fear. She is a woman now who has changed profoundly compared to the girl that I had under my care several years ago. Only the sadness of her gaze and her intelligence are unchanged. She's so young, just 23 years old, but is lacking all vitality. Perhaps her condition may improve, but probably not. Her life has been thrown away. And nobody did a thing to try to overlook this. Old woman. I like this truck, this is quite <laughs> Bravo. Bravo! Very, very good, indeed. Um, guys, like, what do you think of this game, those of you who have watched? Um, I got a bit uncomfortable at the end there, but I thought the voice work, the sound especially, was great. Um, the graphics were awesome. The building itself had a lot of character. You felt like there was history in every room. The way it was told through memory, uh, finding notes and stuff wasn't just a boring, um, cliche thing. It was actually, it held a lot of history, a lot of importance. I really enjoyed discovering, um, her past through exploration. I, I thought it was a great idea. Uh, the, the, the history of mental illness has, um, come a long way and games like this, stories like this make you realize that and, um... I'm really glad I'm born in today's times. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Ain't no one put a spike in my brain from my eyeball. <laughs> Guys, like Love Quest my channel. Thanks for watching this like mini-series, shall we call it. And I'll see you in the next video. Stay dazzling. <laughs>